Hello, this is Noreen Crone Findlay from CroneFindlay.com and ToddyTalksCrafts.com. Now this is part four of Inca Weaving on the Merrix Looms. This part four is about the finishing of your Inca band. So parts one, uh, part one was about getting yourself warped up. Part two was um, heddles, part three, the actual weaving, and now part four is finishing those bands so you can get on to fun things like weaving darling little dolls or vests or, or other wonderful things. These are the bands that I'm weaving right now on the Inca loom, uh, the Merrick's loom with Inkle techniques. So I'm going to, oh, I forgot to show you my earls. Okay, here we go. Just gonna swing the camera up and just point out that chromefindlay.com is my website where my designs and patterns and things can all be purchased. And Totty Talks Crafts is my blog where I post all of the Oh gosh, all of the various things that, um, you know, the support links and step-by-step -step photos and stuff. And so that's what is up on Toddy Talks Crafts and I will put links up there for you. Now, I'll just put this down here. Okay, so I'm going to move the camera in closer and can you see that I've woven the bands to the point where they are, you can't see behind because I've got um, the piece of masonite in the way, but there we go. There's the back there, a little, little bit. There we go. There's a bit of the weaving. The weaving has come all the way around to the top of the loom. And so, in order to be able to make any further progressions, progress with the weaving, what I'm going to have to do now is to take the um, spring off so that I can move the um, warping bar down and then that will allow me to finish weaving the band from down uh, down at the lower edge of the loom uh, up as far as I can go. So here I am just pulling out the little the little retaining rod that holds the um, that holds the uh, warp strands into the spring. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to release the spring from the just oops I have a handle hanging on there still take that off. I'm just going to lift the spring off. I'm going to spread it out a little bit. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. There, I have released it from the warp strands on this band. I'm going to lift this end off and now I'm going to open it up. Ouch, I just uh, bit myself with it. Yow! Um, sharp ends. Okay, there we go. The spring is released, which means that I'm going to release a little tension. So I'm just turning the thumb screws a bit. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll move the camera back a bit. Whoops, caught it on the stool here. Okay, I'm going to move this back a little bit so you can see that I'm going to now, whoops, a bit more tension off. You want it kind of, kind of, kind of lots of loose. Okay, and then slide your warp band down so that your warp band is now just above your shedding device. Like that. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to give myself a bit more tension. Oh, fiddlesticks, you know what? I, I went too far. Okay, you want your, <laughs> you want your uh, bands. There we go. 
you want the woven the the fell line to be just above the lower edge so I went a little bit too enthusiastically down the the loom with the uh, with the um, warp bar so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this means that now that I have advanced the warp I can put some more tension on I'm going to put this flat in my lap which is the way I do weave with the Mirix loom doing inkle bands Okay, hopefully that's going to be okay. I'm trying to sort of crane my neck here to see that I'm actually showing what I want to be showing. So you're just going to now carry on weaving uh, until you get as far as you can. And then I'm going to show you how to um, how to uh, finish that last little bit off. Now, um, the... Uh, The tension for your ankle bands, you're going to find what is the absolute perfect tension for you. And as I've been weaving the ankle bands on the Merrick's looms, I have kind of changed my approach here. I used to um, do one shot of um, with one shuttle on one band and in one shot with the other um Pick, drop the one shuttle, pick up the other one. Now what I do is I weave up quite far on the one band and then uh, come back and uh, um, weave up on the second band because it actually feels a little more efficient to me to do that. So that's how I do it. And you can either use your shuttle, like I run the back of my hand down the band to open it, or you can use your shuttle to open your um, warp strands by just lightly stroking. You don't want to abrade the warp strands, but if you lightly stroke them, then um, it opens them up quite nicely. And the um, using the inkle shuttle is a good idea, but if you don't have an inkle shuttle, use a shuttle that's fairly thin-ish. And um, you'll find most inkle shuttles are either quite thin or else have a beveled edge so that you can beat your, um, your ends, your uh, previous row in. Now, um, I find that the, um, the tensioning uh, is one of those things that you will have to just kind of try it out for yourself and find out exactly how much tension you like on your band and how, you know, you may like your band to be under really intense tension or you may like it to be mm, kind of almost on the slightly soft, loose-ish side. And that's the joy of having the wing nuts uh, because they give you just infinitely variable tension. And so you'll be able to figure that out, you know, just as you weave. I think if I was going to say what the most important um, the, the most important thing to remember about weaving inkle or warp face bands on the Merrick loom, I would say that cutting one color and joining the, the next one when you are doing your warping, because that way you'll just in, just it will be as if you were using a single strand and just carrying on with your warping path uninterrupted. You know, you can twist yarn around one ball around the other, but I did find that that's when I made more warping errors. And so I really think that it's worth taking the time to snip each color as you make the color change because that's going to be the saving grace is for one thing, your warping path is going to be correct, and you really want to have your warp going up 
around, down, and then down, around. And without um, there being the, the thought, oh my gosh, did I, do I go up, do I go down? When you're tying off and joining, you don't have that confusion. It just follows through. You can see where the warp went the last time and where it should go this time. The, um, the other thing, too, that I would say is pretty important is to use a uh, weft strand that is thinner than your warp strands. And like I said before, most people tend to use a color that matches or uh, is identical, you know, to their um, border strands. But I do use, on most of my bands, uh, just this gray upholstery thread. And it's really sturdy, plus it just pretty much melts in. Um, if, I, if my bands were white, I wouldn't use the... Um, if they were predominantly white, I wouldn't use the gray. And I would not use white on the border if I was going to use the gray weft. But if I'm using, you know, then I would use something like a, a good sturdy um, crochet cotton as my weft. So your, um, your bands, as you can see, the weaving uh, goes really quickly because the um, shedding device just opens and closes those sheds for you. Whoops, I made an error there. One of the, I was just going to say, it opens and closes it so beautifully. But you still need to kind of check. I noticed that I had a lazy warp strand there, so it was going to end up being a float and if you notice it um, you know within a row or so then it's good to stop and fix it the first few rows in your weaving are going to be um, two four six seven that's right the first few rows of your weaving are going to be slower than the body of the weaving and the last few rows are going to be slower too because you can see the um, hopefully you can see that above the uh, shedding device I'm just going to shift this a bit above the shedding device I don't have a whole lot of space now between uh, my um, shouting device and the warp bar and so it uh, starts to get you know a little bit cranky and so you want to have am I still in view here I'll shift this up a bit so you, you definitely want to be paying pretty close attention to your pattern and making sure that your um, that your strands are um, that you've got the right number of warp strands lifting for each shed. One thing that I like about um, doing the inkle bands on the Merrix is that the ability to weave with the loom held flat and stable against a desk or a table. I really like that. I like that it's uh, so unwonky. Um, couple of my ankle looms. I have three ankle looms and um, two of them I find really do tend to tilt because I do like working with one end of it held in my lap and so the, the Merex is great that way. And um, if you want to have uh, longer ankle bands then do get the uh, warp extenders because that gives you just a whole lot more length in your ankle bands. Now, what we're going to do, once it starts getting to be really challenging to get the um, shuttle through the um, through your shed, that's when you're going to start thinking, all right, it's getting to be time to finish this band off. And so what you'll, you're going to do is you're going to take two darning needles and you're going to weave them in at the same time as what will be your um, second and third shots 
from the end or you know your, your second and third last rows and we're getting pretty close I'm gonna scooch this down a little see if I can sneak I tend to like my um, my, I try to sneak as much weaving in to have as short a fringe as possible because that's kind of loom waste. Depending on what your, you know, what your plans are for your band, you may want to have sort of long, elegant fringes depending on what the piece is going to be used for. But you may also want to have just every little, you know, every little snoochy little bit that you can get in your band. And so... Um, in that case, you're going to do like me. You're going to push those little darlings as far as they can go. Okay, now who's supposed to go down here? Are you supposed to go down? All right, we're definitely getting to the end here because I'm getting um, warp strands that are starting to go, oh, let me just float here. And I'm saying, please don't float. So... The band is starting to say, the end is nigh. Oh yeah, I've got a float here. Oh, evil little lazy warp strand here. I'm going to unweave this row here. All right, little darling, you were being kind of inconsistent here. Okay, I'll go back one row. I think I'm just going to... Who is up that shouldn't be up here? Okay, I think, aha, uh -huh, aha, uh -huh, I found the, I found the offending strand. There you go. You get under there, you little, little wonky strand. Okay, so, yeah, you know, it's, it's worth going back a couple of rows if it's, going to mean the difference between having a, a floaty bit and not having a floaty bit. You know, it just makes your band look nicer. I'm When I'm doing saori weaving, if I make a, um, an error, sometimes I'll look at it and go, hmm, that's not an error, that's a design element. But when I'm doing a, a piece where I really want the finished piece to have a kind of a flow and precision to it, then I'll go back and I will unweave and reweave it. So it's it just it's up to you. If it matters to you, if it's going to show and you don't want that, then unweave it. If it's going to be something that's just really not an issue for you, then that's fine. Just leave it this fine. It, it can just be, you know, the wabi-sabi random, you know, imperfection where the divine spirit enters. Okay, now I'm going to start weaving in my ends. Uh, my ends, yes. What I want to do in order to weave them in, I'm going to push this down so you can see how I'm going to make this happen. Okay, I'm really sorry about the wonkiness. The camera keeps bouncing on me, which is really not what I want. Okay, so for the last three rows, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I am taking my shuttle through from left to right, and I'm going to place a darning needle into the shed and then I'm just going to finish weaving that row and I'm going to reach over the camera here and open my next shed and take my shuttle through. I'm going to beat. I'm going to take my shuttle through and now this second darning needle will go in in the same oh, wish I had not here open up thank you my friend okay so there now 
I'm going right to left, so the needle is going to point right to left. Okay, can you see the eye of it there? All right, so I'm going to pull that up. Oh, my, my camcorder was full, and it cut me off like two shakes of lamb's tail before I was finished doing the last little bit on the finishing techniques for part four video. So, and that just set my small dog off digging in, on the couch beside me. I mean, not on the couch, on the rug. Ah, stop, stop. Anyhow, I'm going to go back and just hopefully be able to snug in, even though the camcorder is full. Sweetie, stop that. Small dog is being just really not helpful. Okay, so these are the last three rows of finishing the, the, um, the band. So I've woven one needle in following the, the um, shuttle as it went from right to la left to right and then one uh, shot in as it went left uh, right to left. So the very last row is going left to right and now I'm going to cut my thread and I'm going to take the camera down closer. Okay. And please sit up camera. Thank you. And I'm going to show you now the thread goes through the, the needle on that's going from pointing left, right to left. Okay. It's going through here. And then you take it out of that needle and set that needle aside and then take it through the remaining needle and there you go and you can take it back through the previous row and then through the, the row that you just wove through and then cut your cut your thread off and your end is sealed then what you can do is you will release you'll um, pull your warping rod out of the loops um, and release the uh, craft sticks they're out and untie uh, any knots, but then you will be able to um, slide the heddle rod out of the um, heddles and your band will be released and you will have yourself one very gorgeous inkle woven warp face band on the Merrick's loom. So happy weaving and I'm sorry that the camera stopped right when it did. So Ah, <sighs> warp face bands, inkle face bands, they're a delight to weave. And so I hope you'll have great fun with them. And do go to my uh, blog and see some of the things that I've done with um, inkle woven bands. So talk to you soon. Happy weaving. And may there be joy in every day and a whole lot of yarn too. And we'll see you soon. Bye for now.